so this is upstairs in my study and you can see that uh, I've got two monitors and uh, my girlfriend who's working from home um, is getting neck ache so we've actually propped the monitor up on some old scrap so having seen upstairs and seen that the monitor is too low we want to raise the whole lot up and figure I'm going to make something that's actually suited to the task something that looks better than just a pile of old scrap which is what it's sitting on at the moment so I've taken this and this is uh, sitting on a piece of A4 paper and it just shows me drawing around the base of the actual monitor itself and I'm figuring the basic stuff to make it out of would be MDF because what I want to do is I want to, I want to paint it once it's done and try and make it look as if it's actually part of the, the furniture that would belong in that room. So the first things first is uh, I've got measurements and um, that's taken from the template and once I've cut it to width you can see here that I've actually got the laser going and uh, I've worked out that it's an 11 degree angle so I'm just cutting both of those at 11 degrees at the moment comparing it with the uh, template and it's good so uh, I cut the top and the bottom and then um, it's time to cut the sides and because I know that it's an 11 degree and uh, the first thing that I'm going to do is cut them so that it actually achieves the right height because after all this is a practical thing and then uh, in order to give these uh, sides little miniature par parallelograms I guess they would be so that uh, you know they don't stick out or have funny angles at the back um, they work quite nicely and uh, now it's time to take some uh, tight bond glue and this is the I think it's the tight bond 2 this is the, the quick drying stuff the yellow glue and I'm just spreading it out with my finger. I mentioned that I would use screws, but I didn't see any point in the end, so I just uh, used like uh, two inch brad nails and punched, uh, I think, three on each side. And that held pretty well. And uh, as always, you know, a uh, damp cloth and water to make sure that you've uh, cleaned up. And uh, about the only real mistake you can make here is to have the nails uh, shoot through the side, so take your time. And uh, I put a bit of glue, extra glue on because it's end grain. Um, it's MDF, so it doesn't really have a grain, but uh, it sort of does. Um, so I've cleaned off all the glue. And uh, the next job after this is to sand it. And uh, MDF is something that, uh, because of the way it's manufactured, the, the, the face of it is, is, is rolled out with a very high pressure. And once you cut into it, it becomes quite fibrous. So. You want to you want to use a very high um, high thin grit like 220 or 240. I'm going to put a tiny bit of glue in these holes like this. So and this is the yellow glue. So this has got the you know quite a quick drying time. This has been used before, so now when I sand over this, what happens is, is that this, this, uh, this powder that's generated from this, it's not sawdust, but you know, I suppose it's the closest thing to it, will fill these holes up. Watch this, these, these little holes that you can see here, where the nail guns went in, these are about to completely disappear. Now I know where those nail holes are and I can't see them, okay? You can't see the nail holes, they've completely disappeared so they are utterly invisible. So this is uh, rinse and repeat on the other side. I always think one of the beauties of this technique is that it just speeds up the process because it cuts out having to uh, go through a filling stage because you are filling and uh, I made some pine furniture the other day and uh, after I'd used bread nails I, uh, I used the same technique and then bright waxed it and you couldn't see where they were. So, you know, people often say, oh, you can't really sand MDF. Well, you can, but you just have to go real fine. You want to be in the 240s and the 320s. So I don't know where it is, but there was one roughly there, one roughly there and one roughly there. You can clearly see the other side, so that's the before and after. 
So we'll finish this one off. So back to the orbital sander with the um, 220 and the hand sander is actually a, a 320 so that is a very very fine grade. I decided that the top of this stand was going to have a round over on it, not on the bottom just on the top because if I rounded the bottom of it over it would act as a dust trap so I'm only just doing the top and of course being a bit of a funny angle um, you couldn't do uh, uh, you could only do the angles that you can see so the top of it is accessible and is still 90 degrees back to my 320 and because this uh, MDFM grain is so absorbent and is such a pain when it comes to painting I'm using this uh, water-based MDF primer which is very cheap bought it from the local shop dries very very quickly so I'm being very uh, liberal with the amount that I'm putting on and uh, immediately using the heat gun to dry it out, which works well. And it says on the tin that if you're gonna apply a gloss finish, then you need to put two coats on. So it raises the grain and MDF is um, particularly furry once it's been wet with a paint. And so this is no different. So I've given it a very good coat of uh, the primer and uh, it's dried very quickly and I've immediately um, gone to give it a second coat and I changed the brush this time because I'm concentrating uh, on the exposed grain the back is never going to get seen but I still want that to uh, look the same color and again back to the heat gun now it won't take long for it to dry and all I want to do is to go straight back to sanding it with the 320 grit in preparation and there it is uh, with a 320 grit. I'm just taking off all the nibs. You could just quickly see me using the air gun there to get off any dust. And the paint that I'm using, uh, the primer is very expensive stuff. It's specifically used for spraying kitchen cabinets. So uh, it was a cold day outside, so I'm heat gunning it as well as giving it a thin coat. And then uh, once it's dried, I can go over and give it another coat. So I think it had about three four coats of primer and then misting it with the black and then again with a heat gun before giving it a second coat and then heat gunning it and then going over with the aerosol just one last time to pick all the stuff up that I've missed. So there it is the finished article you can see that little um, round over that I was talking about. Um, I didn't bother painting the actual underneath of it because I didn't see the point. It's never going to be seen. And there's a nice little cubby hole there just to put stuff. And there it is in situ. And with all the time that is spent in front of a monitor these days, this is a, a good way to improve your posture and save neck ache. So, you know, if you haven't got the time, uh, you just want to rest it on books, that's fine, but uh, I wanted to make something that was a bit special. So thanks for watching, and like, subscribe, comment.